We're talking about radio, R-A-D-I-O. Well, radio is a word that was coined in the USA in 1910, exactly 100 years ago. It does have an association with other words which perhaps explain why they arrived at the word radio. If you think of the word radius, which is the line from the centre of a circle to its circumference, we find it also in radar, which is a radius sweeping around a circle of, of radio signals. We find it in the, the word um, radiate, which is about stuff radiating from a centre. So why the word radio to describe what it is? Well, when you think about it, the model uh, of radio broadcast was of a central broadcasting station broadcasting, radiating out through radio waves to a large audience within a circle. And the circle was usually a territory. Uh, in the case of BBC Radio, the territory was usually the United Kingdom. It's a hundred years old, but rather strangely, in the last decade or so, the word and the, the model of centre and circumference is no longer really a very good description of what radio is. Well, radio, like nearly everything else, has gone digital. Digital radio, uh, which will eventually become the radio that we all have, it doesn't need to be bound by any territory or any circumference. Digital radio stations can theoretically be received anywhere. And those that can't, we can usually tune into those by means of the internet. So the word 100 years on, um, although I think it will continue to be used because we understand what is meant, uh, doesn't really now designate the form of, of uh, broadcasting transmission that, that uh, it was invented. Wales, we'll uh, work on that basis for the time being. Okay. Radio, when uh, first invented, was um, a miraculous medium, and it would be listened to as a communal experience. We know that that's no longer how people listen to radio any longer. Uh, when TV came along, it, it supplanted radio as the, the provider of that communal experience. Radio now is not listened to in that closed circle kind of way. It's not listened to collectively. By and large, radio is listened to while we are doing other things. The biggest audiences for radio programmes come at what's called drive time, when drivers, who cannot do anything with their hands and have to watch the road, the only thing you can do, the only sense that isn't really occupied, is the auditory sense. We screen it in and screen it out, it, it comes and goes in our consciousness, and it doesn't have that sharp focus that, that other media have. Consequently, it's probably come to be the forgotten medium of media and cultural studies. However, the fact that radio has gone digital, and the fact that we have means now of capturing radio recording, I can capture a whole day of radio if I wish to, at very little expense, using hardly any equipment. We can listen again to radio without having to be there at the time of transmission. So here we have a, a, a straightforward uh, DAB radio, digital audio broadcast radio. It's on Radio 4 at the moment. I happen to be writing a study of Radio 4. Radio 4 is the BBC's talk radio service. Mixed programming, news, current affairs, documentaries, comedy. Here is the, uh, the waveform of the particular Radio 4, 4 programme that's being produced. This will happily go on for 13 or 14 hours, recording quite straightforwardly. It's very, very high quality, CD quality, and can be stored on the hard disk. This is one of the obvious ways in which the analysis of radio is going to become possible because unlike DVDs and unlike TV programmes and unlike music, um, we weren't able to go and buy recordings of radio programmes. Who listens to old recordings of radio programmes? Nobody. I got into radio because I was astonished at the quality of human voices. From a very young age, I was very in engaged by hearing with such extraordinary clarity so many other voices. It was almost a, a physical kind of pleasure. And I often longed for a way of kind of capturing these voices so that you could listen to them again and say something about them. And, and did he really say that? Kind of, you, that you could, you could replay these things. And it seemed, um, when I was young, impossible that, that there was going to be a technology that could produce 
radio with that kind of clarity. There now is, in full CD quality or better, if you wish. I don't necessarily think that's what most people think of. They probably think of, it's a way of getting the news on the run, it's a way of keeping yourself informed while you're in the car driving home, and so on. What I don't think of any longer is that I am a member of this outer circle being broadcast to from the centre and that they have the meaning and it's just being delivered to me. I now feel much more that in listening to radio, everything's up for grabs. The gap between one's shorthand sense of what was said in an interview, when you go back to that interview and listen to it again, the richness of detail and, and often the ambiguity of what's being said is something that, that comes out more. And it's rendered it a much more sophisticated medium than perhaps we're used to thinking of it as when you know, we're catching it as it flies past us.